Michigan. This is one where I know that I have a, um, I, I have my initial thoughts. I have my revised initial thoughts. Nate Brody put out a video yesterday. I mean, it wasn't much of an analysis. It was just the DA explaining the evidence to charge the parents with involuntary manslaughter. And without getting into the details, everybody knows what happened in Michigan. It's another school incident. Uh, a kid showing up with a, a firearm that his parents procured four days earlier. And to show, I have no preconceived notions. I, I did not presume the parents got the firearm for the kid. It seems from the evidence that the parents, if they didn't get it for the kid, they got it very likely for him to use uh, because the mother, according to the DA, assuming the evidence is accurate, uh, had put out a tweet saying, we're, we're taking this to test it out, his Christmas present with our 15-year-old kid. It's a Sig Sauer small firearm. I don't know if there's any special rules about underage kids even possessing them or buying them for them or using them. A uh, kid does what he does at school. It's horrendous. It's there's it's it's just stomach turning, nauseating. Uh, you, you know, even the stories of the heroism. Uh, I, I forget his name now. Of the football player who tried to tackle him. That type of heroism. It, it's beautiful, but it's nauseating because it it ends the way it ends, and uh, all the heroism in the world will never quell the loss of anybody in this situation. The kid. You know, all, all sorts of charges, including terrorism. I think the most shocking charges, or the most surprising to anybody charging the parents with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Robert, I mean, explain it away. How does it happen? And what do you think of the charges? I think they're ludicrous charges. So I think it's a political prosecutor who made a, in my view, unethical public statement about the case. Uh, as a prosecutor, it's not your job to get up there at the time of indictment and not only prejudge guilt publicly, but give your personal emotional opinions about things. Say, as a mother, I'm so that's that's not your job. That's unethical, unprofessional conduct of another political hack who wants to use the prosecutor's office and prosecuting people to get elected to higher office. It's disgraceful. Uh, and, you know, it, it's a sign of a disturbing trend. I think they're being prosecuted for political reasons by the politics of this particular prosecutor. Uh, I, you're not seeing people, a lot of other people who could be prosecuted. I mean, the, the school shooting guy in Texas who got a soft bail. Uh, who got less bail than the parents got. You didn't see a calls for his parents to get me prosecuted. You wouldn't either by the same people all cheering this prosecution. So I, uh, but so that's what I think about the motivations of the, of the actors involved and the unethical conduct of the prosecutor just in her public statements. But the, uh, the legally, how in the world did they cause the death? That's required under Michigan law for involuntary manslaughter. You have to have caused the death. And you have to have engaged in reckless conduct that you knew was likely to cause death. How in the world do they meet that at all? That, 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 that's not even probable cause. And then they had a ridiculous bail put on top of them on top of that. This is I, No one has been able to cite to me a single other case of a similar charge ever being brought in American history, period. So this is, I, I just don't, unless you're going to accuse them of conspiracy, of knowing in advance he was going to do a school shooting. And they don't allege that. All they allege is, well, maybe they could have done some additional warnings. Maybe they could have never bought the gun. Uh, I mean, stuff like that. And it's like, that's that's not criminal culpability for involuntary manslaughter. They didn't cause the death. They didn't do anything that they knew was likely to cause death. So it's a ridiculous charge. That's okay, brought for so, political reasons, and you got a biased jury pool. So who knows what can happen to these people? Okay, I'm going to parse out two parts of this. I agree with you in the sense that as I, I don't like sentences as a blank, unless it's as something where my professional experience is what supports my opinion as a invoking, you know, as a parent, as a human, we all have the same types of emotions. So yeah, that part of it, I, I didn't like, I mean, I didn't like any of it, but that part I, I could disregard. She shouldn't have said it. She is appealing to emotion where she is a DA who should be appealing to evidence, but appealing to the evidence that they invoked. If you have a situation and perhaps involuntary manslaughter are the wrong charges. Maybe those are the overcharges so they can get down to lesser charges. Although I don't know what's lesser and included in involuntary manslaughter. But let's assume that the evidence that she cited for the charges is in fact correct. Uh, they purchased it for the kid with the kid present. Uh, they, The mother put out a social media post that they were testing it with their kid, testing his, his Christmas gift. So an admission that it was a gift for a 15-year-old that they knew the kid had behavioral, serious behavioral disorders, behavioral issues. They were called to school the day of, um, 
they then messaged the kid as the incident was occurring saying, don't do it. I mean, so you get all that evidence together. It looks exquisitely damning. Whether or not it's involuntary manslaughter, I would say surely it has to be something. I mean, I, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, there's, just no, emotionally. there's no criminal law that punishes that. So the uh, if there there is no if there was a scenario like in Wisconsin where if you give an, a person a gun unlawfully you can be responsible in certain criminal context for the use the use of that gun later on because that was correlated to the Rittenhouse case uh, there isn't such a law in Michigan you know there is for explosions uh, explosives and things like that but not for guns so you know the there is no law that criminalizes it uh, part one part two it's like all of that it's like what exactly were they supposed to do. Because like uh, the, the fact they're saying don't do it, uh, don't. In, in other words, how is that bad? Uh, wh wh I mean, were they supposed to pull him out of the school? The school didn't send him home, so the school came to the same conclusion. So the, I mean, the what were they supposed to do precisely? That to the level that they're being blamed for murder now. I mean that that that's what doesn't make sense to me at all. It seems to me that what really is the prosecutor doesn't like the fact that these parents like guns and introduce the kid to guns and is playing on that fear in the culture. But you know, that that's not, I mean, the reality is the kid ended up losing it and the school had as much notice. In fact, maybe more notice as may, the evidence may be than the parents did, but there was no history of him doing anything like this prior to this time. So, I mean, the idea that we're going to start blaming parents for the actions of their kids on the criminal context, civilly, that can be the case in, in a range of circumstances and justifiably so but not in the criminal context and definitely not involuntary manslaughter. They didn't cause the death. They didn't know they were going to cause the death. The only evidence is they were saying, don't do it. And they were, uh, and they were quick to notify the school when they heard about the shooting, that they were afraid that he had done something. So it's like, you know, the, it's like they were overly protective or hiding him or something like that. So, uh, you know, the, basically they're saying, if you like guns and, and you have a kid that's disturbed, you're going to get blamed for whatever the kid does. That's not what the law is in America criminally. Nor should it be. Well, and I really want to read this one because Mark Maggard says, I really do not, this is, this is what happens when the process gets tainted. I really do not believe a single word any prosecutor says after watching what happened with Rittenhouse. And I, I mean, I tend to agree. I will just say, if, if the evidence to which they're referring is in fact uh, represented as warranted, I have some questions. So, I mean, Robert, take it, not a hypothetical, but a gang member who can't procure a firearm for whatever the reason, convicted felon says to someone else, I need a gun for a bank robbery. Someone else gets them that gun. They go commit a bank robbery and, and, and it ends in murder. It's an extreme, it's not this case. I'm just trying to, you know, see where that line uh, occurs. It depends, depends on the state, depends on the law at issue. So the, uh, uh, <clears throat> as to, now, if you know that, that the intention is bank robbery, then there can be certain aiding and abetting conspiracy type charges, but they didn't bring that. So that means that they don't have evidence. In fact, apparently the only evidence is contrary. That they were that they told him don't do it, don't do anything dumb, dangerous, etc. Um, so that they weren't complicit in that, didn't have any desire for him to do anything like that, didn't have any intent for him to do anything like that. Were very quickly to frankly rat rat out their own kid as soon as they heard something happened. They feared that he might have been the one because of what had happened earlier that day. Um, but the idea that they had any notice or knowledge of this or wanted this or tried to create it doesn't seem true to me at all it, it's uh, uh you know the I mean, they have a disturbed kid and exactly what parents are supposed to do in that situation I, I i'm not as quick to rush to judge uh when you know the if you have a disturbed kid what you're supposed to do you're supposed to lock him up well you know the, the school didn't lock the school didn't even send him home so you're supposed to override the school what well, what is what are you supposed to do exactly so the, the uh you know this is a discussion i've had with someone who whose opinion uh Another person, Robert, not, not just you, because we haven't had this discussion yet, but I've had this discussion with someone else. Okay, the kid's disturbed. Maybe target practice. Maybe that would be some sort of uh, cathartic relief. Maybe it would be therapeutic. I don't agree with it. I think it's still, if you know that you have a kid with behavioral disorders, getting them a very lethal, uh, potentially lethal weapon, I want to say weapon, firearm, is probably not the right thing to do. If it's for therapeutic reasons, maybe go with, a firearm that is less concealable, less less potentially lethal, you know, a, a shotgun with five five shot max, something that you can't transport and um, conceal quite as easily. And so maybe in having, you know, effectively given the what was used as a weapon to someone who is, is a known issue, 
maybe it's something. I just, I, I, I did get the impression on the one hand, as much as my visceral reaction to what I thought occurred occurred, I don't know how you get to involuntary manslaughter. Involuntary manslaughter, I, I imagine, is an app, has to be an active contribution to the event itself. You have to have caused it. Caused it. You have to be proximate cause under Michigan law. So the question is going to be, is a proximate cause getting a, a firearm for a troubled youth who you know has issues, behavioral problems? It never has been before. I mean, that's, that's not the definition of cause by any traditional definition of cause. And if we start using that cause definition, that that's a dangerous expansion of criminal liability in this country. So the uh, because then all of a sudden anything could contribute, any event could contribute to the ultimate outcome. That's not the definition of cause under the criminal law. Well, the the cause is you caused it. And not only that, that you knew your conduct was likely to cause it. I mean, how, how did they know they're like they thought when they got that when they, that, that there was a gun around that he was going to go to a school and shoot it up? I mean, that doesn't make sense at all. Well, Delta Tango says the law here in Washington is similar. If my guns are left unlocked, not in the safe, and my kid uses it, I am liable. Civilly, civilly, not criminally. You 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 can't be criminally prosecuted. Uh, uh, you you can be criminally prosecuted for negligent handling of a gun under certain state laws, things like that. But you cannot be prosecuted for the the kid going and shooting someone. That I know of no case like that. I know of none. Uh-huh. In, and even in Canada, I'm I am thinking, uh, based on our extremely excessively punitive gun laws, if you don't keep it locked safely, and it does lead to a a, a, a death, I, there's specific charges for that. I don't I don't think in Canada even it would be involuntary manslaughter. I mean, it, I, they there would be specific provisions as relates to, uh, you know. Yeah, this, this prosecutor this. doesn't like the fact that Michigan doesn't have a law that deals with it, but you know the you pass a law if you want to. Um, but even then, I'd be careful of that because, you know, that that starts to become a, just a backdoor way to encroach on Second Amendment rights to say any misuse or abuse of a gun. Now, all of a sudden, anybody that had anything to do with that gun ever manufacturing, distribution, transfer, purchase, sale suddenly is on the hook for it. And a lot that's where the left wants to go. They want to weaponize the legal system, civil and criminal, to basically uh, gut the Second Amendment so it's effectively uh, negated in America. And and, and this case has that overtone attached to it as well. Even though prominent gun control people came out and said they were not comfortable with this prosecution. Uh, And nor did many prominent gun, even gun control people call for this. So it's even split the gun control crowd because they realize people are going to, you know, the, the, your your ability to control a mentally disturbed kid that, I mean, and, and how you handle that. I mean, that that's, people are assuming some things that I think, uh, are assumptions usually based on a lack of information. In other words, there are people that have never dealt with that. There are people that have never had been counseled to anyone that's done that, never been a counselor to anyone that's done that. It's a, it's, this was not that predictable of an event. The kid had no track record of this. This all happened accelerated fast in like a 24 hour time frame. And so, uh, in the sense of it taking this direction. Uh, but they're not responsible for what the kid did. And I think prosecuting them is a very dangerous, perilous precedent in America. And, and you know, if Tim Poole, for all of the fence sitting that he he does, he did make an analogy at one point. I forget the exact context, but it was analogizing a firearm to a vehicle. And I mean, I'm just thinking in my own mind, if you know you have a kid, even the diagnosed, you know, schizophrenia, bipolar, whatever, and you lend and you give or you buy a, ca- a car for the kid, and the kid uses it to do uh, uh, what the guy did in Waukesha. And do, would anyone think that that would be a reasonable? Uh, some people might think it, like especially if the kid said, "I want to get a car and you know do terrible things." If you got the kid a car and the kid did it, would anyone think that this would be an appropriate charge on the parents? I suspect you might still get a lot of people who would say yes, but I would suspect you get a lot of people saying, "Okay, maybe not." Now, I appreciate yeah. firearms yeah. have potentially, you know, more direct lethal purposes than vehicles. Vehicles are practical, although people's, you know, firearms are tools. But that is necessarily very analogous to this prosecution. And would people feel comfortable with that? Oh, exactly. I mean, and also the left better really think this through. Most violence takes place uh, by gang members disproportionately of certain ethnic groups. You want everybody's mama and grandma start to get locked up? And to be frank about it, they often provide more support in the sense of home, sanctuary, a lot of things. So uh, it's very dangerous to start holding parents 
uh, responsible for the criminal actions of their teenage kids. Uh, I, I just I'm not I'm not in favor of that. We already have civil liability because that makes sense in terms of restoring balance of who has access to wealth to restore it. Uh, and I, I don't have a problem with civil liability. Uh, I have a major problem with criminal liability. Uh, that's a very dangerous, dangerous path to go uh, under our criminal laws to start locking people up because down deep they're being prosecuted because they're on the wrong side of politics in Detroit. That that's the real reality. It's not because they're so uniquely offended by this incident, especially Detroit, Detroit. There's no other parents that have really facilitated criminal behavior by teenage gang members in Detroit. Really? Uh, just these people that are now held responsible for uh, their the, the mental illness of their son. Uh, I'm not comfortable with this at all. By the way, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure I gave the disclaimer this particular stream. There are too many super chats for me to bring up. So if I don't bring up your super chat and you're going to be angry, don't give a super chat. It's to show support. And to the extent I can bring it up, I do. But if, if you're going to be angry, don't do it. I don't like people feeling angry. Uh, same as my last super chat. If a criminal breaks into my house and I have a gun outside, a gun safe, and the gun is used in a crime, I'm liable. Yes, but not under manslaughter. That's that I think is the issue. Not under not under involuntary manslaughter. There are other provisions. And what Robert's point is, and it's one I may have to internalize and digest because I know my in, my immediate reaction is you don't get potentially lethal weapons for for troubled kids, especially if you know. Now, this being said, it, it's an interesting dynamic in this case is the kid's descent does for he had no priors that I know of, and this seems to have occurred almost like a psychotic break. And, and I've and I've had life experience with people who normal one day, psychotic break the next. It might be drug induced, it might be whatever. Things like that happen. Here there might have I mean, been more uh, it's more really just cool, right? Pa the parents parents are not experts in psychology. The school is supposed to have people that know when somebody hits a certain red flag to immediately uh, withdraw him from the school. They chose not to because he had no prior history. But Mr. given what he said, was drawing, that, that they should have. I mean, that, that was on them. Uh, I mean, it's, it's instinctive for parents. Parents are not going to necessarily know what's best in that situation. They're not going to know, what, is that going to worsen things? That, the, you, you expect the professionals, which is school after Columbine, they all have the training on this. The school, and, and I think that's the other factor that's happening here. They want the blame shifted away from the school because the school has a lot of liberal Democratic allies. So the prosecutor doesn't want anybody. Look, this, is, this is the Sandy Hook story. This, the secret of the Sandy Hook story is that the reason why they focused on the gun so much in part is because they didn't keep the school doors safe. Most of those kids didn't wouldn't have died if the politicians in Sandy Hook would have done their job. But that story the media doesn't want to tell, doesn't want anybody to know about. They want everybody focused on Alex Jones and focused on uh, focused on on the gun, like the gun magically did it. Um, and it's uh, it's and it, it, I think here they're shifting it to the parents so that they don't have the school doesn't get the responsibility that it deserves. The school is the most culpable here at not dealing with this red flag because they are in the position to have the training to know what that means much better than a couple of parents dealing with a difficult kid do. This is a very interesting point that I would have never otherwise thought of, Robert, in terms of the deflection of responsibility. You know, the, the, the idea that it's, it's an old trope, but you use armed guards to protect money going into a bank, to protect uh, celebrities going into a venue. Uh, you use locked doors for vaults, for Oscar, you know, Oscar events, but none of this to protect schools. And when you have a massive red flag like this, because it's true, the school did call the kid in it was the day of the event because of a very disturbing drawing and then sends the kid back to class. I mean, it, it's interesting. They said, get the kid, get Apparently the kid. Apparently did counseling. not even search me. You, you can lawfully search on, there's a whole bunch of grounds. You can search a kid's stuff at school. The, the fourth amendment has limited application effectively. It's considered reasonable. And if you know, you can debate those reasons, but they have broad, but particularly under these circumstances, they apparently didn't even search his backpackers or his locker. So, I mean, this was patent irresponsibility by the school. So, and they try to shift, the, they're just trying to shift all the accountability to the parents. But blame the parents, blame the parents, and blame parents' love of guns. The, the, that's the subtext. Well, See, love of guns is dangerous, everybody. If you love guns, it'll probably mean somebody will do a school shooting. That, that They've been trying to do that now for a decade. Uh, and actually three decades, really, since Columbine. It just, Sandy Hook was the ultimate peak of blaming the gun. Robert, when, when was, Colum was Columbine in the late 90s already? Yeah. 
Wow. I mean, I, rem I remember that. Uh, that's time flies, and it's a, it's a drop in the cosmic bucket of time. What 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 what, bo what bothers me most about all of this is that there are going to be people who it, it, it lends to the idea that some people are going to put out there that. It, it's almost politically convenient to allow these things to happen because the way they get weaponized after the fact for political and policy reasons, you know, it, it's almost like you need the tragedies in order to have the impetus for the policy that was not gaining enough traction beforehand. And you will have people who will say, who will legit question as to whether or not, you know, whether or not the tragedy is being weaponized or whether or not the tragedy could have even been facilitated in the first place. And it's one or the other, but one of them is happening right now. I, I'm not saying you've changed my mind, Robert. I, I still think, I, I do think if parents know they have a troubled kid, that's not a, a proper Christmas gift. The only question is, you know, is it is it a separate infraction under existing laws? And if those laws don't exist, then that can be the result of the tragedy or the progress, so to speak, of the tragedies. Enact a law that makes this punishable, but to then try to just jam this circle peg into a square peg of inexistent laws to hold the parents accountable because people need it may not be the right course of action. Yeah. I can tell you that, you know, I'm, I'm a skeptic. Uh, I, those kind of laws tend to easily get into red flag territory, undermine second amendment areas, and often can have unintended consequences. I knew a kid at my prep school who uh, his parents prevented him from getting a gun. He went out and got a more dangerous gun and did more dangerous things with it. So the idea that you can just pre and they tried to blame the kid that he got the gun from for a lot of it. But the uh, uh, and and it's just I'm not real comfortable. You, you, the idea we can control mental illness, um, just realistically, we no, can't. But, no, and, Robert, and to the degree we're focused, that should be the focus. The places that have the means of training should be the ones that are responsible and accountable for uh, limiting for are they're in the best position to prevent bad events. Not in a perfect position, can't have perfection, but they are in a much better position than parents are uh, in, under these circumstances. But at a minimum, it's just not involuntary manslaughter. And maybe you could pass a law, and if Michigan supports it, they can pass the law. I, I'm not a big fan of those laws because I think they ultimately encroach in dangerous areas and empower the state too much. But the uh, but putting that aside, those laws just don't exist right now in Michigan. So that's why there was no basis, as far as I could tell, for any criminal prosecution of the parents. This is a political prosecution of what appear to be blue collar parents who are who the system's trying to railroad. Half a million dollar bail for each. I mean, really? On on charges that an honest judge would have recognized don't even meet probable cause. Uh, real problem with that. Well, uh, well, the, well, what was that? What was it? Fifty grand? What was the bail for that school shooter in Texas? Seventy seventy five, as far as I recall. Seventy five grand. But you know, as long as your skin color is the right now these days, that's what matters, and well, that's, that's a problem. Right. We they'll can't say be they'll judging say, people like that. No, but they'll, they'll say he didn't he didn't kill anybody. So it's 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 a different circumstance. But no, I mean, a school shooting, school shooting. The the severity of the devastation. I mean, arguably, but when you when you compare this to. Other other incidents of five million bail for the Waukesha, which is ten times more for the individual who perpetrated the offense. I mean, I don't know how you measure these things, but yeah, it, it doesn't. It, there seems to be inconsistencies. Um, let me just see here. This is an interesting point, Edward Cullen. I, I'm not sure I'm convinced by it, but I appreciate the argument. Most offensive thing to me is that they want to prosecute as an adult someone wholly responsible for their actions and the parents for being bad. It's an it is a good argument. But there's an easy way to say, okay, fine. The kid gets charged as an adult, and the parents get charged for other crimes. Um, oh, but it's and it's, I'm it's, just not overly comfortable with the idea of, you know, here we have a minor and a parent situation, so that creates some distinctions. But let's take it outside of that. Uh, are, if we know someone's mentally off, or what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to demand they get locked up? Supposed to make sure they never get a gun? Where 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 does this line end? Because that that's what strikes me is, and especially if it's the state that gets to define who's nuts and who's not, uh, that 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 tends to be a misused and abused power inevitably. You know, what can they do? What I used to do in the early days of my practice, motions for confinement. They're such an immediate threat to themselves or others. You petition the court, oftentimes ex parte, without them being there, and say the person's so crazy, so dangerous, lock them up now for their own good and for the protection of society. And... Even, I mean, that was a credible threat that the kid made. That the, the school should have immediately uh, searched his materials and expelled him, and maybe put him in temporary custody. The, asking the parents to be the ones to make that determination was just a mistake from the get go. Well, 
and, and the the amount of times um in I'll, I'll get to this in a second the amount of times in in the practice the minimal practice that i had of motions for confinement where uh it was clear that they were seeking to confine someone who did not need or did not deserve to be confined it, it, it made the one in 10 that needed to be confined it caused you to question that because if you were locking up anybody at any point that did not need to be confined uh, uh unnecessarily you couldn't lock up anybody but it's, it's i mean it, it's a fair point and i genuinely think i appreciate the arguments more now the issue of the law is going to be the real question. Involuntary manslaughter. I can see that for someone clipping the brake line on the vehicle of another person and that person drives the car and hits somebody. There you, you are the active contributor or you are the uh, meaningful contributor. Here, you're lending, some, you, you, you've purchased something potentially fatal and I brought up the you know analogy to a knife. If they had bought a knife for the kid, a hunting knife. I mean, a knife has two purposes and two purposes only very analogous to a firearm, would we all then feel comfortable with charging the parents with involuntary manslaughter for the deaths committed by the kid with that, with that, with that knife? Yeah. And it's also a sign of the inadequate mental health care for uh, mentally ill young people in America. Yes. And because we, we've become a big pharma addicted society and often all they do is try to drug them up and they're not, and whatever it is, it, it doesn't work. And then the media is also culpable here. The media knows every time they make a big story out of a school shooting, it increases the probability of another school shooting. And yet they keep doing it deliberately. Oh. Why don't they get charged with involuntary manslaughter? It, because it, it there's is. more of a causative, causative role with them than the in, in certain aspects than the parents. Because the media knows we promote this school shooting. There's going to be another school shooting because... We promote and publicize school shootings, and and yet they keep doing it. Well, it's it's going to promote more school shootings, but in the meantime, it's going to promote their ratings. So it's 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 good. Oh, of course, for I mean, it's great ratings. People are addicted to it. The, uh, the 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 mental illness argument is a double edged sword, in my humble opinion, because people are going to say, "Yeah, we have mental health problems." So the easiest way to make sure that that who we are failing to treat for mental health that they don't get access to potentially lethal firearms. Um, flip side, you don't you don't deny people the right to drive a vehicle because they have mental health issues that I know of. I don't, I don't think I mean, I'm wrong on that. The focus should be treatment, not different ways of confinement. No. Ideally confine, shut down services. Don't let it, don't let people with drug addictions go to their, go to their, uh, therapy, the therapy sessions, no. cripple society. And then when violence explodes, blame only the weapons and not the, uh, society. It's, you know, the social policies themselves. Sparty Matt says as a teacher, and here is where as a is legit because this is calling on the experience, which is relevant to the situation, not identity politics. I don't know what the solution is. There are parents who are legitimately terrible and F up their kids. They should not be parents too late. And there's no license for parenting, but I don't want the state deciding mental health or doing the parenting. True. The issue would be when the school gets not just a suspected red flag, when they get an overt red flag and they then say, so serious, we're calling in the parents. But then they say, back to school. You get your kid in therapy within 48 hours. That's how serious it is. But back to class for the kid. Uh, I mean, I, Robert I mean, raises a good point. The school knew from its training he was showing signs of a psychotic break. And so they should have taken a lot more actions. You don't call up the parents who are not psychological professionals, who do not have this training that schools are given. I mean, since Columbine, there's been a massive amount of this training that went play. I mean, that, like the Sandy Hook story, people still don't know that the, the, that the politicians decided to not allow the schools to change the doors so they could lock the inside of the doors. And had they had that simple ability, who um, uh, most of those kids would have lived, would have never been shot. Why don't they know that? Because the media wants to cover it up for the local politicians. Instead, scream about Alex Jones or something else. And so the, and then like the Connecticut courts are eager to blame Alex Jones somehow for it. He had nothing to do with it. While those same Connecticut courts said the schools couldn't be sued for what they did. Uh, and the media covered it up. Obama covered it up in mass. Um, and so it's it's that that's where, where should the accountability be? Should be the people that have the most capacity to take the most corrective action. And that's not going to be uh, criminally punishing parents for the crimes of their kids. That's going to be schools being held accountable when they were on notice, had the training to do something and didn't. They didn't even search his materials, didn't even send him home. 
I mean, I mean, it, it was a crock what the school did that day. Now, and clumsy clever ones. I think there's a type, a meaningful typo. Parents are being held liable. Why not the teachers? I presume that meant, and that's that's on point. Uh, we need we need Winston to break the chat. Hold on. Oh God, I almost ran over the dog in the chair. Here is Winston. He is eating my backpack. Yes, you are. You took a dump in the kids' room this morning, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> a little little bastard. He knows what he did. He knows what he did. 